Hello and welcome to this artist conversation within the context of Mycelium about networking as a female artist. I'm the curator Annabel Rocco Rodriguez, and today I'm having the big pleasure to talk with the artist Laura Felberga, who has been one of the artists participating in this uh, exhibition. The exhibition project has been an international exchange between artists of Latvia and Munich in Germany. And we asked questions about artistic success and a healthy network. What does a healthy artistic network look like in a society that puts competition over solidarity? What does artistic success require? What does a healthy artistic ecosystem need? The exhibition Mycelium is a joint reflection on success, the ecosystem, networking, detoxification. And as you can imagine, as we are doing this exhibition right now, we have been impacted by Corona. And this is the reason why due to the exhibition taking place in Munich, we are additionally recording artist conversation. As many of the visitors cannot take a part in the exhibition, but we want to open up a conversation to this necessary question. Because we believe that after Corona, we will need to redefine our notion of success. We will emphasize that transparency and solidarity will be essential foundations to continue and rejuvenate a better and healthier artistic ecosystem. And without further ado, Laura, I'm giving you the floor and um, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. So the first question, uh, which might be a very obvious one, as the viewer would like to know what you did for the exhibition. So I'm gonna start to screen share and would like you to guide us um, around what kind of a work you've done for the exhibition and how your work relates to the exhibition topics of network, artistic success, ecosystem, and detoxification. Yeah, this is a, a view of my work. The title of the work is Togetherness. And actually I uh, kind of borrowed this title for another artist uh, from Lithuania, an artist who um, made a performance workshop in Latvia. And the full title of the workshop was Togetherness in Times of Planetary Crisis. This was about one month before the corona situation started. And it's unbelievable how much this workshop was precisely about the topic we are all facing. And uh, since my work is very much about this connection between people, I thought that togetherness would be a very appropriate title for this particular piece that I um, sent for this exhibition. And uh, um, the idea really finalized during the last couple of weeks when we already were facing this, this crisis in the world and we were still attempting to uh, participate in this exhibition. So together with my project partner Patricia, we, uh, we discussed about our ideas and my ideas were still developing and I, I was not very happy that I'm so slow, but suddenly all the things fell together, all the thoughts I had previously and this new situation. So I created work where uh, you can actually technically wear it as a costume. You can be inside this net and you can be there together with your partner and you're surrounded by this uh, space and you are both uh, on your own and also connected with your partner. Um, in the exhibition, it's exhibited as an installation piece, but what I'm hoping if everything goes well and uh, I'm able to travel at some point and meet my project partner, we could wear it and really experience this togetherness in this piece. Yeah. I think it's a very beautiful work because it also has a very tactile feeling, right? Like you're basically working with the notions of inside and out. That's the work your uh, partner Professor Linke has done for the exhibition and they are installed uh, next to each other. Can you walk us a bit 
into this very interesting notion of togetherness. You just mentioned that you participated in this workshop and what were the notions of togetherness, maybe even in, in um, regards to the notion of solidarity? Uh, well, uh, this is a very important topic, this togetherness in all our world nowadays as artists, as human beings, as, uh, as, as living beings on, on this planet. And the, the workshop, I, technically I did not participate, but I, but I saw this workshop. Uh, th there were artists who were seeking this um, uh, new ways how to connect in this world, how to be together. Uh, we're still separated from each other, but how to, how to experience this togetherness. And somehow this was a topic that I, I felt it, it, it was something very much about what I'm doing as an artist. Um, I have several works um, titled Connection. And they are also about connection between people, about these invisible connections between us. Even though each one of us, we're a separated body, somehow we are also connected. Now with the corona situation, we all have to face this reality that we're all uh, living beings and there are other... Uh, tiny tiny things that can affect us so we are literally connected somehow even though we cannot see it visibly so yeah all, all this together somehow this creates this thought and it resulted in this artwork as well and and it, yeah i'm continuing with this subject now i absolutely love that um togetherness has a certain poetic to it right because one of the exhibition topics has been around the notion of ecosystem, which is a non-hierarchical system, right? So we share certain things. Um, it is about interconnectedness. It is about transparency. It is about solidarity. But togetherness feels different than solidarity and connection. Togetherness feels more like a really shared experience. And I think, uh, in particular, during the times we're living now, it is one of the few global crises where we are really together uh, living into this um, experience, different than the notion of solidarity, with, which has a lot to do with um, mutual aid and also sort of um, a hierarchy in the sense of someone is helping and the other person is receiving help. And it's different from the, from the experience of connection. Connection is a very equal, reciprocal moment. Do you have thoughts around the definitions of togetherness, connection, and solidarity that are important for your work? Well, I think solidarity for me is a conscious choice. Uh, I am... Uh, um like even though i do not make this conscious choice of course i can do that and many people do now we are all together on this planet anyway regardless of our choices we all uh are connected but we can be aware of this connection or not and then solidarity is like this uh human choice that we choose to uh to help to uh improve lives of other people we we, we choose to do something about our own lives uh make conscious choices so yeah that that is solidarity for me and togetherness is something it's just a reality we we are here all together no matter like if our choices are bad we experience the consequences if our choices are are especially now like we all of us we 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 make these choices every day whether i'm going out from the house who am i meeting am i staying uh, like somehow it has become so obvious every step and also the, the consequences of the smallest choices that they can be enormous they can affect our lives and other people's lives so this is like a huge lesson to all humanity it is indeed absolutely when we talk about another aspect of 
togetherness. It has been the experience in the many collaborations you've done with uh, your um, artist uh, partner, Patricia Linke. What things did you learn through this collaboration and what challenges did you overcome? I, I will start with the challenges. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that we have never met and we only uh, collaborated using email which is a, a, a very strange way of co collaboration. And of course, mainly artists use this very direct interaction. Like we, we go to residencies or we participate in art events and, and we get this direct interaction and it's very easy. And suddenly it was somehow that we had to create this invisible connection between us. And it was not that easy at the beginning. And I felt from Patricia and also what I was doing, like we were seeking this, how to do that. There was this one email from one side, then the reply, then again, again. And slowly at some point, I felt that both of us, we, we, we came to this point where pro probably we, we felt desperate. <laughs> and suddenly we opened up. And we started this very personal conversation and things started to flow and also ideas and uh, it all reflected in our artwork. Suddenly we, we found a way how to communicate even though we only have this, this screen with a text, without voice, without sound, without smell, anything. And still we could find a way. Yeah, that, that was challenge, but that was also... Uh, that was also very beneficial and beautiful. It's lovely because um, most of your colleagues did agree and did mention that it is a true challenge when you do not have the human moment, the human communication face to face when you do a collaboration and instead have to mimic it through the communication, through emails, whatever communication tool you're using. And I think it's really interesting to see that in a, in a time we are redefining communication. I mean, during the pandemic, we need to social distance. So obviously we have to find new ways for communication. It feels like a very apt exhibition to experience um, how communication changes also the way that artistic practices are interconnected or exchanged and even how creativity is a part of, to mobilize people and to mobilize thoughts. Yes, indeed. It, it is. It's, it's very challenging now. Um, it's interesting that what this Mitzelia project started was somehow predicting the situation we are now all in. Like with this invisible communication, with trying to organize something where, where we are not technically present, this uh, connection between artists and like now when the exhibition is really happening, it seems really, this is a topic of this time. Also the foremost exhibition, it is an exhibition also about what is happening right now, even though the project was started a while ago. Yeah, I mean, the timing is, um, is a challenge in itself, but it somehow it feels like a very urgent exhibition, right? And I love that. We get to intermingle uh, so many different notions. So we have pieces in the exhibition who have a very futuristic approach. And then we also have pieces who have a very pragmatic um, approach to all the topics we were mentioning. And going back to this very human moment of sharing, because I think one of the, that all the pieces have in common is the moment is of vulnerability because I think that communication starts with a certain transparency. And if you want to communicate with a person who is not there, you have to open up and you have to find ways in order to create this moment of connection, which is usually the easiest bridge is by sharing vulnerable personal information. And um, if we're opening up with a very personal question, what are your personal thoughts around artistic success? Pardon, what is my... What are your notions around, what are your thoughts around artistic success? Around artistic success, like, um, most of all, it is freedom to uh, 
express my ideas in a best possible way. And I think more successful you are, more you have available means of doing that. That includes um, exhibition space, uh, financial means, uh, attention from public. Like all, all these moments have to come together and this gives you more tools to, to express your work in a best possible way. Uh, it's probably not the only definition of success. You can still work on your own and probably at some point you, you, you get these other results as well. But, but still, you live in this world, you, you want to have audience, you want to have some, yeah, some reflections on your work. So yeah, for, for me, success is probably having enough means of making the best, best possible version of my work. When we're talking about financial stability, because I think it is a very valuable point of um, the notion of success. Um, on the on maybe two two points here, because I think we have to um, go a bit deeper. That success is not just the um, it's not just financial wealth. Like there's a difference between financial wealth and stability. And I think we both agree on that term. And before we were recording this um, conversation, you were sharing that you do have um, a job that uh, enables you that your artistic practice can work on its own because you have a, a, a job that is very related to your practice. Uh, and maybe you wanna elaborate a bit on that. But it's also, on the other hand, um, because you mentioned also, despite of financial stability, you also mentioned, mentioned uh, this notion of fame, because you want to share your work. And of course, an, a bigger audience uh, facilitates that your work has uh, a bigger impact. Maybe you want to elaborate a bit more or give us a bit more detail into your I call it day job, but I know it's a bit more for you because it is part of your practice as well. Yeah, my my regular job is um, book design. I, I work as a book designer in a very small publishing office. And uh, this work, uh, I, I like it a lot. I'm, I'm a book person and I read a lot, so I'm very happy that I can also design books. But there are some moments when I feel that, of course, as a creative artist, I, um, I miss this freedom of just sometimes for longer periods of time to concentrate just on my creative practice. And of course, as many artists, I, I, I dream of such opportunity to uh, dedicate much more time on just doing proper research on uh, being on my own and of having just this uh, very weird time when you're not doing anything, but just let uh, your thoughts flow. And uh, yeah, so um, uh, for me, as if, if we return to this uh, topic of success, also ability to have time is also uh, part of art artist's success and just be in your studio, spend time there. But, um, but the job I have is, uh, is, it's very nice and it's very free. And also I have, um, uh, I can organize it entirely myself and I'm in a way I'm very lucky of having this kind of job that I can um, um, w Where I can have so much freedom. Yeah, it sounds very balanced. I mean you were referring before on the on the definition of freedom and it sounds like for you your day job and your I mean day job is my term in that case uh, that your day job and your artistic practice they have a good balance because they enable you the freedom one compensates the other and both have a certain artistic outlet that you appreciate yeah that that is true that is true when we continuing on our exploration of um, solidarity and networks what kind of networks do artists require to um, establish a successful career to 
hold a successful career and what kind of structures help you personally in your practice? Um, I will start with the other uh, second part of your question about how it works in my life. Um, I discovered uh, that performance art and being involved in, in performative practices help me in many different ways. Like one basic thing is just that I, I get to meet many artists and uh, many visual artists, even if they come from other areas of visual arts, they practice performance on, in, in different degrees, some, some more, some less. But uh, it's a great way to, um, to meet artists, to learn from them and to learn something uh, very deep and very direct. When artists perform, they express themselves so purely. So uh, like they, they really open up and uh, uh, yeah, and also being part of a performance. This is uh, the best way to connect. And later it, it just helps you that, that you know all these people, you have like a network of your art friends around the globe and you can share information, you can get information from them. And uh, if you come up with some new ideas, you have people that will respond. Um, I think this is how it, at least until this point, how it worked globally, that artists had some kind of network where they were able to meet, to talk, to share ideas, and to create new artworks from these new experiences and also from their in individual thoughts. Now we are facing a huge challenge where we don't know how it's going to work in the future. Maybe, maybe it will be the same idea of networking, but probably in, in different forms. So, uh, yeah, like, um, yeah, I hope I answered your question. Absolutely. <laughs> and I think one, one part that we might need to emphasize in this conversation is that they are just a point in time. And I mean, they might be in a very particular historic moment in time where everything is changing. So none of this um, conversation will be a final point to the discussion. And that's been Absolutely. the motivation also about this exhibition, because our thinking around success and solidarity and ecosystem is a very final point. We always have the belief that success is a goal. It is a linear path from A to B. And at the end, you're successful if you put in the right amount of work. But success is shaped through a lot of parameters. If, in particular, if you are a woman artist, if you have a certain ethnic background, if you come from a social class, um, it will shape your definition and the outcome or the ability you have to move in this system of success. Um, and you can put in the amount of labor and the amount of work you want to do. It has to be um, met with certain systemic changes. And I think that particularly Corona will, will define, maybe redefine, the systemic notions we are that were already wrong before um, the awareness of the virus hit the global um, context and um, will hopefully help to build a healthier ecosystem for the artists because I think a lot of these definitions that we are talking about in the exhibition, a lot of people are rethinking what success looks like and also success is a very um, linked to your current life. Some people are younger, some people have to take care of children, some people have to take care of elderly people. There's a lot of death happening right now. Financial precarity, it will redefine what you mean with success in this time, in this moment. Sometimes success can be to pay your rent and that's already success enough. And then sometimes it is to have a major exhibition, but between one point of being able to pay your rent and one point to be able to exhibit in a really major exhibition. There are a lot of layers between that that are also very successful. And we just have to finally have this conversation about the big notions of success and um, how many layers there are in it. Hmm. And last but not least, um, what qualities do you need for a successful collaboration? Hmm. You need um, 
I think you need courage. <laughs> you need courage to, to approach the other person, even, even if you are doing this using email. Uh, courage to start conversation, courage to show sketches of your work or to say honestly that I'm sorry I haven't been able to come up with any good ideas or to respond to what the other person is saying. But this is not um, uh, like, like, like a brutal courage where you just go and you grab attention. No, it's something, uh, it's a very vulnerable way of uh, of being courageous um, and also you need um, uh, like something like um, uh, I don't really know what's the English word for it but to feel the other person like empathy okay. yeah um, and to t take in consideration what the other person is uh, talking about uh, uh, their ideas and I think uh, in case with my project partner we were just lucky that somehow it happened uh, between our works um, at, at first it seems that yes we do have something in common but we could not really put the finger on this what what is this how to develop it and somehow through our conversations it it did develop and this miracle happened when I saw um, the finalized version of her work, what Pat Patricia sent to me, and suddenly I realized this is, this is so much like my work. Um, there is so much in common, the colors, the texture, the feeling of the work, and I don't know how this happened. But this is why, why I believe that we are, we, we are really connected all around the world, even though we are not technically even in the same country. But it's through our ideas, our, our conscious and subconscious mind, that we are this one huge organism. We are together. And even, and even having that huge distance, we can create something that, that has the same vibration or the same energy or the same feeling inside. So this is the first time I'm experiencing this in such distant uh, collaboration. But yes, it happened. You know, I absolutely adore that you used the word courage and not brevity. Because courage comes from, or is related to the French word cœur. So it relates to the heart. And it is very true that a lot of the immediate um, solidarity, the networks to build, the communication, it starts with the heart wide open because it is the moment of vulnerability, as you said. And I think it is the easiest bridge from one person to another to open up and um, to show, to give some space, to allow a conversation on a very human scale. And um, I absolutely love your, your answer to that. And dear Laura, Thank you for your courage to come on this conversation. Thank you for sharing you. so bravely on it. And um, it's lovely to, you to have you in this exhibition. And for you, dear viewer, we love to build a bridge to you. We love to bring this aspect of vulnerability. We want to hear from you. What are your notions of success? How, you are, how are you redefining success during this pandemic? What have you been learning? What networks have helped you? This is not just a conversation with women artists. It is part of the conversations because success is shaped through gender. But we absolutely want to hear from male artists, from non-binary artists, from people of all classes, all color. Please get in touch with us. We have a little hashtag that we're using. It's Mycelia Muk, Mycelia as the exhibition title, and Muk from Munich MUC. Please share it, get in touch with us, we'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't seen it, there are other conversations happening, some in German, some in English. Please follow with the conversations you feel comfortable with. Thank you so much and until very soon.